Welcome back to Mackie Tech, everyone. And today we're going to be reviewing Raspberry Pi Connect, which is a free web-based solution that allows you to access and control your Raspberry Pi from any web browser using either SSH or what's called screen sharing or a form of remote desktop. But how good is it and what are its limitations? Well, stay tuned and we'll find out. So here we are on our Minus Forum uh, UM890 Elite, and we have our we have connected here to our Raspberry Pi 5 in this window, and this is via Raspberry Pi Connect. And as of this recording in April 2025, we're running the beta, which started in May of 2024. And as you can uh, see, I can use my Pi as I normally would. I can go down to the sort of the start button for the Pi. I have my menus. I can open up the terminal as I normally would. I can tell that I'm getting a little bit of lag. Uh, if I go into Libra Writer, there's really no difference in terms of lag. But if I happen to open up a browser on the Raspberry Pi, and again, I am connected on Wi-Fi on both machines, and the Minus form I'm using is using Wi-Fi 6. If I go to FAST.com and I do a little bit of a check, it's actually not bad. 160-ish, uh, 170-ish. So that tells you the connection that I'm running through this, which is, um, you know, as I mentioned, not, not too shabby. If I go to another browser in my Minus Forum, and I run it here, I'm getting the same thing. So it's actually not bad. Uh, a lot better than I thought. This is going to hit around 200 um, or so. And so it's a little bit better than the Pi, but not much 160 versus 200. Eh, a little bit faster. So there is a little bit of lag, but you can tell that it is struggling a little bit. So in order to get this running, you wanna make sure that your Raspberry Pi has the latest OS uh, bookworm. And this will not work on any other Debian-based Linux. This will not work on you know, Ubuntu, it won't work on Mint. This only works on the Raspberry Pi OS. And it needs to be Raspberry Pi OS, not Raspberry Pi Lite. And that's as of today. As I mentioned, I already have this configured. And you can see that I am on the connect right now as this little indicator down here. And while I'm connected here, I can turn off Raspberry Pi Connect. I can turn off screen sharing specifically, or I can turn off remote shell access. And obviously if I click this, my session will end. So I want to be mindful of that. Let's pretend that this doesn't have anything on it. So in order to install this, and I will leave all of these instructions in the video description, as well as where I got them all from. So first we're going to, as I mentioned, update the Pi, do a sudo apt get update and then upgrade. And then we'll do a sudo apt install rpi-connect and that will pretty much install everything for you now i've already done it so i'm not going to click on enter but that will install all the dependencies it needs it will go ahead and start the software for you and then a couple different ways you can do it from here is that after you run this you will have an icon on your on your desktop depending on where you have your little toolbar here it might be on top it might be on the bottom but you want to look for a little white little circle with little edges around it's not going to be purple but it will be white or blue and so when you see that you want to click on it and then you want to your option will say turn on raspberry pi connect and then that will actually launch the browser to uh, make the configurations on the web portion you can also type rpi connect on and that will turn on and alternatively if you type rpr rpi connect off that will turn it off and in this case if i hit this hit enter it would terminate my session one of the cool things about rpi connect is if i say rpi connect and just hit enter i get a number of different commands i can use to kind of check to see where i'm at i can check the the version i can check um, the status of it if I go to RPI Connect status, it tells me that I have 
one session active, which is the one I'm on now, and that's under screen sharing. I don't have any SSH sessions yet, but I, I do use screen sharing and that's on, and I am signed on. So this is a good way to tell if you're, you know, you're not sure if someone else might be using it, you can always check this. And then the RPI doctor actually tells you um, if there's any type of connections uh, issues with your connection. If I go to RPI Connect version 2.40, and uh, you know it's on the ARM64, which is what the Raspberry Pi is. So after you've done this, we'll need to go online and register this Raspberry Pi and create an account on Raspberry Pi Connect. So there are a couple different ways to do that. Uh, the easiest way is to go down to this little white circle down here and you click on turn on Raspberry Pi Connect. Uh, mine says turn off, but yours will say turn on because it's the first time you're using it. And once you do that, you'll come to a screen that says sign in with your Raspberry Pi ID like this. And you click on this. Now, if you don't have one, which you probably don't if you haven't done this before, then you click on this link where it says create one for free. And when you click on this link, you'll come to this page. And this page will ask you for your email, your password. Uh, you put in your password again to authenticate it. And then you put in your name. And you click on I agree. Click on I'm not, I am human. And click on continue. And then it will send you a confirmation email. Once you've authenticated your account, you'll be signed back in. And you'll be asked to name your Raspberry Pi device. After you do that, your account should be good. And you should be remotely connected. So when you sign on, you're greeted with a screen and yours is going to have a different name than mine. But you can see here that we have connect via, and that is where we're going to start the actual connection process. And we have two options, screen sharing or remote shell. Now, what's interesting is that we look over here on the left, we can see that screen sharing is in green, which means that we have an active connection, which makes sense because that's what this is. This is our screen sharing right now. So let's close this. So we can see that even though we closed out our session, the Raspberry Pi sharing is still on. So that just means that it's it's not necessarily active, but the protocol is still running. So if we go to a shell on our Raspberry Pi and we type in rpi-connect status, it isn't showing any quote unquote active sessions, but it's still I'm still signed in, it's still on. So I can turn it off if I want to say RPI connect off like that, that will stop. So now if I refresh this, you can see that I have no active connections. If I bring the shell back up and I type in RPI connect on, it'll say connection started. And then if I refresh this, now that it's back on, but I would have to start these both manually by going to connect via screen sharing remote shell. Just want to make sure that you're aware of that, that there's a couple different ways to do this. I would recommend that you have SSH enabled and working on your Raspberry Pi before you start monkeying with this too much, because unless you have like a monitor connected to your Raspberry Pi and a keyboard, you're not going to be able to do much for remote connection unless you have that. Because right now we're operating what's called the headless, which means that we're going to be controlling it without actually using a direct connection via monitor or, or keyboard. So if I go connect via screen sharing again, it's going to check the connections waiting for response from Raspberry Pi 5. All right. And it says right here, new sharing screen session started and uh, Raspberry Pi connect. I could click on this little purple thing. I could turn both of those off. That would also kill my connection. And if I click on sign out, that'll also kill my connection or turn off Raspberry Pi connect. That will also kill this connection. So there's a couple different ways to do it. And obviously you can go up here and click on disconnect also, and that will do the same thing. And there are little handy little controls down here. If you don't have a keyboard handy, I can enter full screen and I get the full resolution of my desktop. Let's go ahead and bring that back down. So let's test out the copying and pasting from the two different sessions here. So I have a terminal open on my Raspberry Pi and then let's open a terminal on my Linux station. There are options up here where it says copy from remote, paste from remote. Uh, that's normally if you don't have like a mouse or if you're on a phone or a tablet and it just makes it a little bit easier. You can use them. You don't have to. Um, it's just the same, essentially the same thing as you would from any other um, copy and paste. You just, you know, if type in paste this and right click and click on copy and then click on paste and that works just fine. I can do that from the other end. I can go now paste this click on copy and then right click and go to paste and then now paste this works. So when you paste it over here, even though you can do it with the mouse or here, the paste to remote actually works a little better, I found. As far as I know, this does not work with files, so I can't drag a file over here. But I do think they're working on that. Again, this is the beta. Uh, it doesn't work flawlessly right now. Now let's see if we can use the Raspberry Pi Connect over 5G if the Pi is behind a firewall. So first thing we'll do is close out this session and go to the upper right-hand corner where you can see that I'm currently on my Wi-Fi and we're going to switch this over to my iPhone and here it is here and we can see that we are now connected iPhone and we close that out. 
Okay, now we're gonna go back to the connect site. We're going to refresh this. And just to show you that I'm not cheating, it still says iPhone. And I'm gonna go to connect via and click on screen sharing. All right, so that works. Now what's funny is that we go down to this Wi-Fi here on the Raspberry Pi and the Raspberry Pi itself is on Wi-Fi, but we are connecting to that Wi-Fi or through that Wi-Fi network via our 5G hotspot on our iPhone. And it's a little bit, a little bit jinkity. It's uh, not real smooth, but it's uh, definitely usable. Let's open up a, let's go to full screen and we'll close this out. See, it looks like it's, it's struggling a little bit. And I go to fast. 160, 150, so 160, so it's not bad. It, it's uh, actually pretty good for 5G. I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised. It's not ideal because it's still kind of jankety. You know, my understanding is Raspberry Pi Connect uses WebRTC, which is similar to how Zoom and other video conferencing software works. And they obviously don't use VPNs and you don't have to be uh, port forwarded to use them. So I'm not sure if that's why it's a little bit slower than that, but um, it works. And there you have it, Raspberry Pi Connect. So that is going to wrap up our video today on the Raspberry Pi Connect. We saw that it has a lot of really neat features and it has a lot of functionality, but it does have a couple of limitations, technically speaking, with respect to productivity, you know, videos, uh, if you're doing type of gaming, it's probably not the best uh, source for that. But let me know what you think in the comments below. If you've used it before, if you have any other usage cases that you might wanna suggest, let us know. Also, if you're watching this video and you're trying to duplicate what I do and you run into any challenges, as I mentioned before, I will leave everything in the description. But beyond that, if you need assistance, please consider supporting me by visiting my Patreon account, which I will leave in the description. There I offer a couple of different technical support options to help you out along the way. And the extra money will help me keep the lights on here. So that's always appreciated. So if you enjoyed this video and found it useful, please make sure you like it and give me a couple comments in the description. I'm always open to any type of constructive feedback or any suggestions from any of my videos. I always really do appreciate it. If you're not subscribed to Mackie Tech, make sure that you click on the subscribe button so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. And thank you again for watching. We will be talking to you again very soon.